Are you in the process of purchasing a home or maybe you're refinancing your current mortgage? I'm discussing the five most common mistakes that people make when getting a mortgage and how you can avoid them. You don't want to miss this and I'll be right back right after this. Welcome back. My name is Dale Corpus. I'm a realtor in the Tri-Valley area in the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area. And I post videos every Friday about all things real estate. As a real estate professional for over 20 years, I often see clients make mistakes when going through the process of getting a mortgage. And so what I wanna do in today's video is help you understand what these mistakes are, how to avoid them because you know, when getting a mortgage, it's one of the biggest financial transactions of your life. And even, you know, the slightest mistake in the process can actually cost you a lot of money. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over these common mistakes, how to avoid them and help guide you in the right direction. As we're going through this video, if you're wondering about how to get in touch with the lender, and you're not sure where to find the right lender, do me a favor and reach out to me and I'll gladly connect you with somebody that I do business with, somebody that works the way I do um, in an ethical, uh, professional manner. That lender will take great care of you and guide you uh, in the right direction. Now, while today's list is not gonna be in any particular order, I'm gonna start with the one thing that I think is most important in this process, and that is shopping around. Now you say, why would I shop around if I got a lender that's willing to give me a great interest rate and I feel like the fees are, you know, uh, competitive? Why do I need to shop it around? I'm happy with them. Just so that you can confirm that you're actually getting a good deal. What I often see is that people go out and they find a lender online or they hear an ad on the radio, they call them, they feel like they've, you know, they're getting a good quote, a good fees, and they decide to move forward. And what I see happen more often than not is that those fees change, those rates change over time, and you don't end up getting what you were actually quoted. So if you could start the process by getting, you know, different quotes from different lenders. And what I usually recommend is, you know, call your local bank, get them to give you a quote. Maybe you have a credit union, maybe you have, you know, uh, another source that you could check, but also get a competitive quote from a mortgage broker. Why a mortgage broker? Because a broker has access to multiple lenders, not only the box that your bank fits, but they also have the ability to go out and shop your lender to offer the most competitive rates and the most competitive fees. And by going out and shopping your loan with a couple of different lenders, you could confirm that you're actually getting the best deal for you. While uh, you're in the process of shopping around, I think it's important to note that you can have a lender run your credit multiple times. And while shopping around, you have 45 days to shop your loan where it will not affect your credit score. So if you're worried about getting a quote from one lender and then going to another lender and having them rerun your credit, it will not affect your credit score for 45 days as long as you have it done within that time period. Now understand, if you are getting quotes from multiple lenders, which is what I'm recommending, when you do your shopping around, that is you need to have them done on the same day. And why? Because interest rates change. They change daily and sometimes they change intraday. And if you're not getting quotes on the same day, if you're not getting fees quoted to you on the same day, then chances are the loans are not comparable because something could have happened in the market during that time frame to change things. So you want to make sure uh, when you're getting multiple quotes, you're getting them done at the same time from different lenders so that you could confirm that you're getting the best deal. The second mistake I see people make after shopping around, getting different interest rate quotes and fee quotes is not actually understanding what the fees are on the mortgage. 
So when you get a mortgage, there is a loan estimate that should be provided to you by that lender. In box A on that loan estimate are the fees that the lender is charging you to do that loan. Some lenders will charge you loan origination fees. Uh, they might charge you processing fees. They might charge you these additional fees. A lot of these fees can be junk fees and can be negotiated in some cases. So when you're getting quotes from lenders, you know, not only are you comparing the interest rate, but you're also comparing the fees that are being charged because some lenders might have you buying down the interest rate to get a lower interest rate. And if you are just looking at the interest rates and comparing interest rates, your interest rate with that lender might seem really, really good, but if you're not uh, actually paying uh, to buy it down, it might not be as good as you think. So you need to understand what you're paying for in box A. You also might have to uh, have lenders, like I mentioned a moment ago, charging you junk fees, so they might not be charging you Origin, origination fees or anything, you know, processing fees or what have you, but then they turn around and charge it in other ways. And it may seem like a good deal until you actually understand what you're signing. So have the lender explain to you what fees you're being charged so that you know exactly what you're getting. The third mistake I see people make when getting a mortgage is not understanding APR and using it as a point of comparison. The reason I say this is because interest rate and APR are two different things entirely. And I often hear people saying, hey, can you match this APR? When in fact, they should be worried about the interest rate more so than anything else. The APR is associated with the fees that you're paying in order to get that interest rate, but it's amortized over a period of the loan term. So in most cases, 30 years, and unless you're keeping that loan for the entire duration, then the APR really isn't that important. You need to focus on your interest rate. You need to focus on your monthly payment and you need to focus on the fees that you are being charged to do the loan. How much you're actually bringing in to close that transaction, that's what's important. So focus on that versus the number that's showing in the APR. When you're comparing one APR to another, it's very difficult to decipher the difference in them without actually looking at the entire closing statement, what you're being charged, etc. So again, don't focus on the APR when getting a mortgage. Focus on the interest rate, focus on the fees that you're being charged in box A by that originator, and then use that major point of comparison. The fourth mistake I see people make is actually going with the lender that has the lowest interest rate because it offers the lowest monthly payment. Now this seems uh, counterintuitive to everything that I'm telling you because I'm trying to help you get the best deal possible and you would think that the lowest interest rate is typically getting you you know, the best deal that you're getting, the best deal that uh, with the lowest interest rate and that's not always the case. As we mentioned earlier, sometimes you're paying fees to get that interest rate uh, down. And sometimes, you know, the lender, the lenders uh, that's quoting you the lowest interest rate has actually hasn't done the due diligence on their side to confirm that you're approved. And where I'm getting at the here is that you more so want to focus on uh, going with an expert over going with the lowest rate. And ideally, you're finding the expert that's actually offering you the lowest rate at the same time. This is especially important when you're going through the home buying process. Not only do you want a, uh, an expert on your side, you want an expert that knows how to communicate with the listing agent. You want an expert that knows how to communicate with your real estate agent. You want an expert because, you know, uh, they've asked you uh, all the property questions, everything up front with regards to your qualifications so that you know you're not gonna have any issues once you get the home uh, buying process started. Often what I see is people call, you know, one of these online lenders, a call center and the ad radio, and they have a conversation with you know, an inexperienced person in a call center that's only, you know, talking, taking orders, if you will. They're not actually asking you the right questions and what happens is once you get into the loan process, you think you're pre-approved and then 
you get into the process and after you've made an offer and you come to find out that, you know, they didn't do their job properly and you end up not being in a position to actually close on your loan. That's going to lead me into our fifth mistake, which is getting pre-qualified and not getting pre-approved. What is the difference? The difference in pre-qualification versus pre-approval is you calling a lender, you know, whether it's somebody that was referred to you, you found them online, it's your bank or what have you, and having a conversation with that lender without them actually looking at your tax returns, looking at your pay stubs, uh, looking at your bank statements, taking a look at your credit report. Maybe you just told them, you know, your credit score. They said, okay, based on all that information, um, you're pre-qualified up to X amount without ever requiring any documentation. That is a mistake. If you're going through the home buying process and you want to make sure that you're actually getting pre-approved, that the lender is looking at your tax returns, they're looking at your pay stubs, they're looking at that credit report, they're asking you additional questions about this information on to make sure that they're not going to have issues once you actually get an offer accepted. And that throws me back to working with an expert, right? Number four, if you're uh, working with an expert, that expert is going to make sure that you're fully pre-approved so that once you get the home buying process, you're not at risk of potentially losing your deposit because you didn't do the proper steps up front. Now I realize that buying a home, getting a mortgage, refinance can be very uh, stressful as well. So hopefully the mistakes that we just uh, discussed provide you a bit of insight, a little bit of clarity, and maybe even some guidance on what you can do to avoid them if you're going through that process. If you found this helpful, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You may also want to check out my past video on the nine biggest surprises when buying a house. The link to that video is on the top corner of this screen. Again, I'm Dale Corpus from eXp Realty in San Ramon, California. I help buyers and sellers throughout the Bay Area and Tri-Valley, and I'll see you on my next video.